Hello, this is Arnold again, and I'm going to extend our project with login and registration functionality. Now, this is going to be pretty complicated. So I'm going to split it up into multiple videos. The first part is going to be about adding the necessary packages and then configuring a project. So what do we need? We're going to make use of the ASP.NET identity framework and the ASP.NET Identity Framework is going to make use of Entity Framework for its uh, database functionality. Uh, let's just try to add these packages using Nuget and see if we can find them using Browse. Um, so I right click on the project, manage Nuget packages, and then we're going to search for uh, our packages. I'm going to include pre release versions. You never know. So what do we need? We need Entity Framework. Let's see if we can find the right version. Oh great, it already directs us to ASP.NET Identity Framework, but this is not the one we need. Um, okay, this is already getting pretty confusing. So there's so many packages here. And what is the one we need? Well, I think we need the Entity Framework core version and then SQL Server. So let's look for that one. Microsoft Entity Framework core SQL Server. This is the one we want. So I'm going to install it, version 1.1.0. I accept. But what we also could install is the Entity Framework tools. They will enable us to uh, create databases and update them from the command line in Visual Studio. So, Entity Framework Core Tools. Let's see if we can find those. So, and there it. Uh, okay, that's the one I need. Microsoft Entity Framework Core Tools. So, let's install that one as well. And then we need Identity core where is it and this is actually the the sub package we want the one that uses entity framework uh, behind the identity framework so i can install this and it will install the dependency as well i think uh, yes it will so when we get this one we get everything now of course you can install them using the package manager console if you know the package names by heart, but I don't. I have to find them in this mess of millions of packages. Anyway, let's go over what I installed. So I installed uh, the Entity Framework SQL Server version and the tools, and I installed the Microsoft ASP Net Core Identity Entity Framework Core version. Let's see how we're going to get this working. Well, we need a few classes. We're going to have to create our own database class and our own user class. So let's create them somewhere. Um, let's just add a models directory. And then a folder in it. Because who knows how many model classes we will get. So this is where all our identity model classes are going to go. And we're going to create an application user class. Now you could name this uh, just user or whatever you want. And I'm going to inherit it uh, from another class. And I hope this works. Identity user. So is it going to find it? No, it's not going to find it. Oh, not again. So I'm going to close Visual Studio. Save it. And now I can resolve the namespace and it will add using Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity Entity Framework Core under the usings and this will work. So I'm not sure why I have to restart Visual Studio after adding packages. It's a bit annoying. But anyway, the identity user contains already the username, password, and stuff like this. So I don't need to add anything here yet. But if you want to add your own user data, then this is the place to add properties. Anyway, we also need to create our database class. So I'm going to create it under the models directory. Add class. 
and I'm going to call it application db context. I'm not being very original with the names, but please forgive me. And I'm going to inherit it from identity db context. Let's see if we can resolve this. Yes, we can. And we have to specify a type uh, that will be the user type. And we just created that it's application user, which is also in a different namespace. So again, I have to resolve it. Okay. So this is going to be our database class. So now to get this working, we have to change our startup.cs to add both entity framework and identity to our project. So we're going to add our entity framework and identity services before we add MVC. So let's see if we can, yeah, we have add DB context and then we have to specify the type, which is the application DB context class we just created. And it's in another namespace, so I have to resolve it. And there it is. And then we have to specify what kind of database it's going to connect to. And you do this with a Lambda expression. Um, let's see. Okay, there's supposed to be a use SQL server method here, but it's not there. Um, can I resolve it? No, that's weird. Okay, but if we just add using and then microsoft.entityFrameworkCore, then it should be there. And it is, okay. And what does it want from us? Well, to use a SQL Server, we're going to need to specify the connection string. I'm just going to type it here. Our server is going to be a local DB instance that's installed with Visual Studio. And the actual instance is called MSSQL local DB. And then we specify our database and we'll just call it, um, I'm not sure what, what are we going to call it? Uh, star date, I think. And that's all we really need to specify to get this connection string working. So with this, we've added entity framework to our project. Okay, so let's add identity. Now we again have to specify a type. IntelliSense is not helping us. I'm not sure why. But what we have to specify is the type that's going to be our user, which is application user, and our role, which is going to be identity role. Um, if you can't find these, then you have to resolve the namespace, of course. And this is a method. And then we have to specify uh, in this one also the database. Uh, add entity framework stores and the, again the type, which is application DB context. So this is our configure services method and we've added entity framework and identity and configured them. Um, last thing we need to do is also in the um, request pipeline, uh, uh, our middleware, we have to add identity with simply use identity before we uh, forward the request to MVC. So that's all the configuration we need to do to get uh, entity framework and identity working. I guess that's it for this video then. It's uh, taken long enough. In the next video, we'll continue by the actually writing some interesting code to get this stuff working. So bye for now and see you next time.